Tomorrow, May 6th, is the coronation day for King Charles III. So let's talk about the role of perfume in the ceremony. If you watch The Crown, there was a whole scene where they showed Elizabeth being anointed with the royal chrism, which is the coronation anointing oil. And this scene is the closest that we've come to seeing it because it has never been photographed or televised. The anointing of the sovereign is thought to be too sacred for public eyes, which Okay, let's talk about the oil itself. This is a picture of the oil used at Queen Elizabeth II's ceremony in 1953. And here's the recipe. You can see it has sesame seed and olive oil, perfume with roses, orange flowers, jasmine, musk, civet, and ambergris. And this recipe was the same recipe that was used from Charles I's coronation all the way back in 1626. Okay, so why these ingredients? We'll talk about the oils in a second, but the perfume ingredients, the roses, orange, jasmine, civet, and ambergris, I've talked about those in my other videos on Tudor perfumes and the like. Those were all ingredients that spoke wealth at the time, and they were used to scent clothing because, well, they're super hygienic back in the day. So I'm not surprised to see those ingredients in this preparation. But the anointing itself goes back about a thousand years, and there are a few implements that they use to administer the oil. First is this eagle, it's called an ampulla, and there's a hole in the beak in the Archbishop of Canterbury, because remember, UK Sovereign is also the head of the Church of England, thanks Henry VIII. Anyway, the beak, that's where they pour the chrism into the coronation spoon. Here's the spoon, and this is a lot. But what is cool about the spoon is that it's the only thing that survived that whole Cromwell situation. So the eagle was remade, but this spoon has been around since either the reign of Henry II or Richard I, both in the 1100s. So impressive history there. Okay, so we've got the spoon, the archbishop dips his fingers in it and anoints Charles on the head, heart, and hand. Now, you know Charles and his whole sustainability thing, so it was important to him that the oil this year be vegan, so the recipe is a bit different. This year the recipe has the olive oil and the sesame oil and it is scented with a mix of essential oils, rose, jasmine, cinnamon, neroli, and benzoin with orange blossom. We've mixed the ambergris, the musk, and the civet because we don't like animal cruelty. The olives were harvested from the monastery of Mary Magdalene in Jerusalem where Princess Alice, King Charles's grandmother on Philip's side, is buried. So that's special. The oil was then consecrated by the Patriarch of Jerusalem as well as the Anglican Archbishop of Jerusalem seen here in the photo. All right, happy coronation watching if you like the monarchy and happy Saturday if you don't. And you can find the rest of my videos on the history of royal perfumes at the playlist below.